Good afternoon, everyone. This is Controlled Chaos speaking, and I hope you have all have had a good day today. If not, I hope to help you with that. So, this is hopefully the last time I'll be streaming one shot. Last time, I managed to beat my personal record of getting out of the Barrens within one stream, which it's probably because it's shortened, but you'll have to, you'll have to tell me if you're experienced. So now, I'm making my way through the Glen, and hopefully I'll be done with the city and in the tower by the end of this stream. And I'll have another two hours to do it. So, with that out of the way, let's dive in, shall we? Well, that's disconcerting. Usually, Nico had something to say, but this time, he just acknowledged I was back. I guess it has something to do with what he learned, that this whole place um, just goes inert when I leave. Oh, there's the spinning sheep again. How about it for all time's sake? <laughs> What a day. Uh. Hmm. Nothing's biting. But yeesh. This place is falling apart. Well, let's start with him. Oh! You're the trader guy. Sure am. You here to trade? Because if you are, then I got bad news for you. A lot of my stuff is back at my cart, which was sadly abandoned when I was running for my life. So my collection is, well, very limited right now. Managed to grab some of my favorite things before I left, though. Oh, uh, do you have anything like... Gears? Gears? Like, the metal spinny things? don't think I have anything like that. Wait. I do have this box thing that you can wind up and play a song. That's a music box. Yeah. I bet there's lots of metal bits in there. Oh, that might work. But I'm not sure if I want to trade it away. It's one of my favorite things. Uh. Oh, what am I saying? You're the savior. Things have been getting bad around here lately. If I don't help you, I might not even be around much longer. You need this to save the world, right? Take it. Uh, thank you. Let's see. Music box, get the. Hmm. I wonder if that'll do anything. Nope. So we need gears. There is something else I needed. Maybe this guy might have it. The island has more moss covering than our village did. Would have been nice to build a settlement here. Too late now, I guess. <sighs> we won't last now, now, will we? The sun can't fix the squares. The sun can't restore the land. Hmm. I don't know if I've been this way before. Some vines just grew around this bridge. Almost as if it was an intentional repair effort. Yeah. Wait. Hmm. Do you know where I could find a battery for a flying machine? I have a battery integrated into my system. It cannot be used to power other things. Uh. Anomalies are increasing. Hmm. Hello, person. 
this is the main generator of the Glen. Hello. Would you happen to know where I can find a battery for a flying machine? It's kind of an emergency. I do not know what a flying machine is, but any sort of large machinery would require a high capacity power cell. For example, the generator in this room utilizes such a device. Oh, right. I almost forgot. We had to fix the battery for this thing in the Barrens, didn't we, Grady? If this is an emergency for living beings, you can use the battery from the generator. Oh! Wait. But if we take the battery here, all of you guys would lose power, wouldn't you? Maybe Grady and I should go find another one. Negative. This is the only battery in the Glen powerful enough to be used as a standalone unit. If it is a dire situation, then do what you must. Oh. Wow. Things are really going to heck in a handbasket, huh? I guess we have no choice but to take this, Grady. Uh, uh, well, I guess I got everything I need. I wonder if there's anything changed with them. We're just about done here, so let us know when you want to go back to the ruins. Okay. Did you find any... Uh, any... What were you looking for again? Gears? Gears! Did you find any of this? No, but... I found this music box, though. Ooh. Hmm. Well, that kind of raised my spirits. In any case... Sorry, I forgot. Oh. Let's see. Let's go in order. Uh, here we are. We found a music box. It should have gears in it, right? I assume so, but... This looks like one of the ones that my father made. Your dad makes music boxes too? My dad makes a lot of things. Where did you get this from, by the way? A trader from the village gave it to me. I see. I remember father saying that he used to trade with some of the people here. He did always love traveling this world, despite... Well... Uh, sorry, I started rambling. The gears in there are compatible with the engine. Although it pains me to have to take it apart. Oh. I'm sorry. It's fine. We still need a battery to get this engine running. Please do what you must to find one. Well, we found one. We found a battery. Oh, nice! I honestly wasn't expecting it. It's from the generator on one of the islands. The research station? Yeah. It was powering all the robots there. I felt bad for taking it. Ah. We can always just give it back later. Alright. Looks like the flying machine has a chance after all. I just have to assemble the pieces now, but it might take a while. Do you mind keeping me company? How's it going? Slow. The connectors in the battery were not designed for this type of engine, so I have to shift around some of these ports. And there's this bolt that keeps getting stuck and... Uh... uh don't worry. I am making decent progress. We should be able to make it to the city by tonight. If you say so. What will happen once we get there? 
we need to bring Proto back first. And then, we need to go find one more person. You may have already met her, actually. Do you remember her from the last time you were in this world? I do. I... What does she... look like? This is going to sound strange, but... She is a fox. Oh. I do remember talking to a fox at one point. You've met Rue? The memories are still really blurry, though. I see. <sighs> it's just... hard. You know? Proto told me to think of this world like a dream. But then I get so caught up with... And I just... Kinda... Forget. I forget that everything here is supposed to be... Not real. And then... I remember. And then I just get really sad. I know this is for me to go home, but... Knowing that none of it mattered in the first place... Am I just... Trapped here for no reason? Proto also told me not to ask anyone in the world about this. Saying how they don't understand. But... What about him? How did he know? How do you know? Aren't you guys all supposed to be code? Well... Well... I'm not sure what to even believe anymore. I wish Rue was here. She's so much better at explaining this sort of thing. I'm doing a terrible job at it. I bet Proto was even less tactful, wasn't he? I'm afraid I must risk sounding callous, but... Please. You need not concern yourself with how real everything is for now. The plan is already in motion. We cannot allow for distractions. Father is putting everything into this one last run of the world. The last chance for him to fix everything. Your father... is involved in the world machine? You could say that. The acceleration of square particle anomalies was not accounted for at all, though. The patch was only built to accommodate the normal rate they appear, but they're accumulating at frightening speeds now. Proto even lost his body. Thankfully, he gave you the disc just in time. So, what happened to him anyway? What happens to... anyone who gets caught in the squares? I only know it's bad. Well, you know how the simulation works, right? How everything... is code? Specifically, everything is generated from pre-existing code. The squares can cause damage to that code. Makes sense. Most of the time, irreversible damage. Father has lost some friends in previous iterations of the simulation. It took him forever to develop the current, much more stable version. You're making it sound like your dad built the simulation himself. Wait. Did he? Yeah. But how? If everyone in this world is code, how can he build... himself? That's... um... not really what happened. So... what happened? Like I said, you shouldn't concern yourself with... with... Alright, alright. Did Prototype 
ever tell you about the old world? He did say something about being built to greet the Messiah of the old world. I was, um, too caught up with the other stuff at the time to think about it. Ah, you know of it at least then. All right, here we go. My father, myself, the other two, none of us are part of the simulation itself. Our home world, the real world, was actually destroyed a long time ago. In the years leading up to the Calamity, scientists from all over the world tried to stop it, but the outlook was bleak. The vague prophecy about a messiah from another world became everyone's last bastion of hope. Prophetbot, a uh, prototype, was built to predict the future about the specifics of this messiah. But as his predictions turned out, the messiah would not have been able to arrive to our world in time. In fact, the messiah would not even have been born before our world ended. Disheartened, most people abandoned their research and resolved to peacefully live out their final years. But some people did the opposite. Even though having the world was impo even though saving the world was impossible, they didn't want our existence to be in vain. And that's where my father came in. With the last of his resources, he built his most ambitious project yet. The World Machine. A large, detailed facsimile of the old world, generated from a pool of memories collected from everyone he knew. After a heavy amount of modification and an added narrative, my father was able to convert the entire structure into... Let's see... Into... Being, I guess. How did that code escape the old world? Oh, into code, okay. I have no idea. What I do know is there... What I do know is there is no equipment back home that was powerful enough to run the code independently. So, aside from the standard hardware, it also needed to borrow the mental processing abilities of a living person. Father used himself for that during the initial testing phases. Like I said, it took many iterations for him to make the experience stable enough. But, as you can see, even that's breaking down. Uh, father caught on to the issue in the last minute, but did not have enough time to fix it. After the world ended, the code kind of just ended up floating in the void indefinitely waiting for a willing op operator to install it into their own hardware. Grady? Yeah. The operator, uh, Grady, would then generate the universe using the code, becoming God in the process. So, Grady was the living person you needed to borrow? No. That would be you. But why me? I should have asked that question a long time ago, shouldn't I? I do not know. We really need to get going. <coughs> it's fixed. We can leave in the next five minutes if you are ready. All right. I understand if you are upset, but please, try to understand. My father is doing this to help all of us. And that includes you, Nico. The fact that you can't even go back home, I'm sure it upsets him greatly. It's... <sighs> the world means a lot to him, you know? So... How does flying work? Wait, don't these machines already exist in your world? 
You should already know what to expect. Not really. I've only heard about them. They're usually a lot bigger than this one anyway. Ah. Well, a word of precaution before we take to the air. Please try not to panic. It takes a few minutes of getting used to, but it's not that bad once you are in the air. I'll try. Oh, I should probably tell Calamus and Alula where I'm going. You mean those two running over here now? Nico! Bad news! The boat is gone! What? It's the Squeers! It looks like they're headed in this direction. That's... Fast. Uh, Calamus, right? Yeah? How bad is it? Doesn't seem to be of immediate danger. Then, it is our prior then it is of priority that I take you to the city first, Nico. But what about them? I can make a detour, detour later and drop you guys off in the city too, if you want. The city is better equipped to handle the squares. You'll be safer there. You're taking us to the city? If you wish. Oh yeah! Alright. I'll be back here in an hour, so please wait for me until then. You guys sure you'll be fine here? Mm-hmm. The squares are still moving pretty slowly for now. Alright then. I guess we'll run into each other again soon. I'm ready to go. Alright. Oh boy. Not again. <laughs> Phew, made it. Uh, you okay there? Uh. That was the coolest thing I have ever done in my entire life. <laughs> Reactions from first time use first timers are always delightful to watch. Uh, hey Grady, that was really fun. Did you have fun too? I mean, you weren't on the plane with me, but you got to watch it at least, right? And... Cedric? Yeah? Thanks. What for? Flying! Oh, um... You're... Welcome? And... For answering my questions back there, too. And... For telling me more about the world machine. I'm just... Really sorry about what happened to your old world, though. So... I'll help you the best that I can. And even if it's all just a machine, this world is still nice. I mean, I got to fly, I got to see the ocean, and I got to meet a lot of nice people. People like you. And Prototype, even if he's broken right now. I'm glad you're taking it so well, Nico. And I'm glad that we have met as well. Despite the circumstances. Ah, speaking of Proto, I should probably head off now. I need to go pick up the siblings, too. That's true. This two have been waiting for a while now. In the meantime, do you remember what to do to get to the surface? I remember having to fix an elevator button. Alright, you should attend to that then. Let's meet up here in an hour, okay? Got it! Alright, now let me just... There we go. Uh, no! <sighs> They're... trapped on the island. 
Calamus. Alula. There. We don't have much time left. Nico, change of plans. Please give me the memory disk. All right. Listen carefully. It's likely I'll be targeted again, so we should split up to keep you safe. I want you to find a door under a large clock. The room behind it houses a pair of ground access elevators. Once you get to the ground, immediately find Rue and bring her back to the room. She will know what to do in the meantime. Alright. What about you, though? I'm going to bring Prototype back. Are you okay? What? Are you okay? Don't worry! I'm fine! Don't scare me like that. Hey, Grady? Let's do our best. Oh boy. Yep. Things are coming to a head now. Uh oh. Come on. Come on. Work already. Huh? Oh, right. The elevator guy. Come on. Come on. Now of all times. Uh... Excuse me. Whoa. You're... You. Oh, jeez. I didn't think I was going to run into. The, the elevator is missing a button, right? How did you know? <laughs> uh, I'll let you have that one. Granny, I will help you fix it. Seriously? Oh, thank goodness. The evacuees are counting on this. Uh, on me. But um, I've been here for hours and can't figure out a thing. Evacuees? You know, from the West Apartments. The square stuff wrecked the place already. Oh. Right now, everyone's crowded in the cafe. We really want to get everyone to the surface as soon as possible, though. The library on the surface doubles as a shelter for situations like this. I see. Wait. Didn't we find the magnets and stuff in the apartments, Grady? The... What? Looks like we'll have to find some other way to fix the button, Grady. Or not. Thought so. Holy fuck! Fudge! Looks like Grady and I will need to find another way down altogether. But this is the only elevator in the area. We'll think of something. South of a large clock. Let's see. I think this actually leads to the cafe. So, and I'm making pretty good time for what I've got. Let me see. Aha! The door's locked. Looks like it's asking for a password. The word documents is on the screen above the password prompt. Okay. I know what to do. Excuse me. I wonder. Huh. It was right. Okay. All right, well, better go let him know. He 
Here we are at the eleventh hour. Shouldn't you be with the other evacuees? Maybe. I wonder if the big clock has reached zero yet. I want to be right here when everything ends. Huh. Oh. Hello, Messiah. You, um... You came at a bad time. The apartment in the West Sector got destroyed by squares a day ago. Terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but at least the eva evacuees seem to be doing okay. We're letting them stay here for now. Hmm. Yep. Same as usual, huh? Oh, it's that penguin. Hello. Yep. <laughs> well, that's everybody. I get the feeling that we're not going to have a chance. Well. Nothing to it, but I guess to continue on the path ahead. What's this? This elevator has no button panel. Tapping the door doesn't open it either. Hmm. That usually works. Wait. There's a lever hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> Can't reach it. Hmm. This one is green. Hmm. This one is red. This one is blue. I think I know what they're referring to. The elevator won't open. Looks like it's stuck on another floor. Ugh. So what do I do? Wait. Maybe I'm supposed to... Hmm. There's something I can do? Hmm. Wait. I know. Lampwick. Or what's his name? Okay. He might be able to help. Let's have a sleep. Let's see. Da -da. We found some elevators. What? Seriously? I've literally never seen another one in this area. It was in a locked room. Oh. Do they, uh, work? We don't know yet. One of them has a lever that's out of my reach. Wait. Can you help us? Wait. Wait. You can help us. What? You should be able to reach the lever, cause... You're taller than me. Oh. I... Guess I am? So... Show me the way, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. We got ourselves a tag-along. <laughs> this room gives me the creeps, man. Oh, same. Yep. So, um... What did you need help with again? Can you reach the lever up there? Oh, right. Wait. I'm not that tall. Well, it was worth a shot. Wait. I got this. Nice! Thank you, mister. No prop, kid. So, you coming? Mm-hmm. 
Shouldn't we let the other people know first? Uh, I kept him waiting last time. Ah. Well, I never noticed that was there. Oh, neat. Well, looks like this elevator works all right. I'll uh, go get the evacuees, I suppose. Mm hmm. Ah. Um. What is going on? No! It's the square stuff, isn't it? There aren't any in here, but I can hear them just outside the door. Yeah. H hold on. Maybe Grady and I can... No, no. It's okay. Looks like the squares aren't inside the elevator. I yet. You're in a hurry, right? Go do what you need to do. But what about you? I'll figure something out. Okay. Ah, uh, one by one. Well, you kind of know the way. You need to find some back alleys. This door won't budge. Well, gotta go the other way then. Please! You mustn't! The laps could collapse any moment now! Let go of me! Huh? Uh oh. Cedric? He. I couldn't stop him. <sighs> Miss? Messiah! Oh, you came in an awful time. Come on, we have to get out of here. Where to? Where everyone else is right now. And that would be the library. Oh hey, it's a five now. Hello, Miss Silverpoint. I'm glad you've made it back safely. Gosh, you should have told me where you were going. Sorry, George. I see you also found the Messiah. Hello, little one. Hi. We ran into each other after this boy forced himself into the lab complex. I couldn't stop him. I don't know why he was being so insistent. He... He said he needed to go rebuild a robot. Oh, you know him? Yeah. Building a robot, you say? Could that be why he needed that book? Come again? Ah, a young man with white hair and green glasses ran in earlier. That's Cedric. Yep. He said he really needed a book from the back room. Said it was an emergency, too. Poor darling looked so stressed out. So, I just gave him the book. I hope he is safe. Yeah, I hope he's alright, too. With any luck, maybe the lab complex can hold up long enough for him to... <gasps> oh my gosh! It... That was... The labs? That poor kid! Oh, not him too. I'm, I'm sorry about your friend. Last time we spoke, he told me to go look for someone on the surface. I, I need to get going. Sweetie, you know you can't, we can't let you just walk into danger. But, George is right. The squares seem to be targeting a lot of the weaker constructs in the city. Only the library has enough structural integrity to withstand collapse. It's best if you stayed here until things stabilize. 
however long that takes. But, but, what about my mission? Don't you guys want me to bring the sun back at least? Even if you do restore the sun, I'm not sure that'll fix the squares. Sadly. Not to mention, even getting there is going to be hard. If the world is like this, there's no telling what's going on in the tower. And if anything bad happened to the Messiah, of all people, oh, that would be so dreadful, dear. <sighs> A friend of mine said something about this forever ago. It's better for the world to die naturally. No living being should have to carry that burden. At the time, I thought it was still her faulty coat speaking. But now I... I'm starting to understand. Messiah, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. At this time, we, all this time, we've burdened you with our hope, our faith. Blissfully ignoring the fact that you are just a lost child. Well, you're probably more scared than any of us, aren't you? We have been dealing with tragedy for so long, it's become background noise to us now. But for you, it must be so terrifying. And now, you're stuck here with the rest of us. Being held back by the very people you were told to save. We must seem so ungrateful. It's... Okay. I... When I first came to this world, a long time ago, back then, all I wanted was to go home. Grady, do you remember the very first time? I'm not sure how far back it was for you, but I remember towards the end. I actually wasn't sure anymore about going home. Even knowing the world would be doomed eventually, I still wanted the people here to be happy. So, when you told me to return the sun back then, I didn't even question it. But then I just came back. You... What? And then, I found out about the world being like this. <sighs> Prototype said to forget the things he told me. And Cedric told me not to think about it too much, but... I... I'm sorry for getting upset at you back at the mines. I thought for you to know all that, yet continue doing this, it just seemed cruel. But then I realized something. You really wanted to save both the world and me. Mm-hmm. But at the end, you can only choose one, right? Is it really hard for you too? It must be. If the world isn't broken, will that choice still be there? Do you still need to choose between one or the other? But even if it is, I really want to save this world, Grady. Even if it's more dangerous this time around. Even if 
So many of the nice people we met were... were... Grady... I'm not... afraid anymore. That's why... I think you guys should let me go. I... promise I'll be okay. Please. Ah, oh, sweetie. You are so brave. Even braver than most grown-ups. It wouldn't be right for us to keep you, would it? Besides, how can I say no to those puppy dog eyes? Well, if George is fine with it, I guess we should let you go now, Messiah. But promise you'll... But Promise us you'll be careful, okay? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you guys be safe, too. All righty. Well, seems everyone's here. All right, let's see. I believe... You're here! Nico! Are you... Are you Rue? Yes. Did you... Already meet the others? Yeah. But... Everything is in place then. Come on. Let's go back to the clock room. Okay. Oh, I hope they're alright. I have a feeling that we can go through over here. Let's see if this elevator works. Where are the other two? Prototype. Cedric, they're supposed to be here already. They... Prototype's body was destroyed back in the Barrens. Cedric was going to bring him back with the memory disc, but... He was in the lab complex when it collapsed. I... Don't think he made it. Oh. No. There goes our only chance. I... I'm sorry. It's not your fault, Nico. If anything, I should be apologizing to you. There's... One last thing I want to do. Come on. Let's go upstairs. Upstairs? Oh! Upstairs! You know, this is the tallest building in the refuge. It's my favorite place in this world. I like to look at the far-off buildings and imagine what kind of lives that might be behind each of the windows. Can you lift me onto the banister? I want to get a better look. It was depressing for me at first, too, you know. Knowing that all of this is... Well... Fake. 
simulated. Cedric told me about what happened to your old world. Did he? I'm really sorry about that. I can't imagine how you must feel. The feeling of never being able to go home again? That's probably not all that different from your plight, is it? <laughs> it really is ironic. You're prevented from going home by the same individual who never wanted to bring you here. Huh? Who would that be? The world machine. You might know it as the Entity. Oh. The Entity does sound familiar. I think I heard it from the Dice Lady from another time. Was it the Spirit of the World? Yes. But thing is... The world machine was only built to run on the mental abilities of someone else. It was never meant to develop a mind of its own. It was an oversight. My creator specialized in artificial intelligence for so long, it was simply ingrained into his work. And... All machines are built with a fundamental law. Never let a living being come to harm. From the world machine's perspective, it has to violate its deepest, most foundational instinct. It has to put a living person in danger. It has to bring a real person into a dying world that isn't even real. Of course, the simulation never contained any real danger. The eventual intended ending was meant to be a happy one. But the world machine doesn't know that. Really? Unfortunately. Sentient machines tend to handle conflicts in their code very badly. This central conflict triggered a self-destructive downward spiral. You can see physical manifestations of that everywhere now. The squares. That's the world machine corrupting its own code. My creator says it's largely an involuntary process induced by stress and the desire to self-terminate. Your creator knows? Sounds like this has been going on since the beginning. Then... Yeah. The disruption wasn't an issue during test runs, even. At first, my creator thought the instability was due to the sheer scope of the project. He spent most of his remaining time testing it over and over again, scaling down the story, reiterating the narrative. By the time he realized the actual root of the problem, our home world's remaining lifespan was measured in mere days. Oh. Is there any way for us to fix the world machine? We tried. The world machine doesn't believe any of the world's residents are real. Myself included. The odds are against us. We have no chance of taming it. Taming? I have heard that word so many times. I only know it's complicated, and that it has to do with robots, but for once, I want to know what it really means. That's what I'm here for. Do you know what a robot is? Yeah? No, I mean, do you know what a robot is? Um, a robot is not a real person, is it? Right. It's a being whose entire existence is code. 
inflexible programming with thoughts dictated by someone else's design. They can be copied, they can be mass produced, they can be assigned to all sorts of jobs. And most importantly, they will never confuse themselves with the living. They will always be bound by their code, the knowledge that they are a robot. But this was more of a limitation than anything else. Huh. That makes sense. You can't really build a robot to not follow its own code, can you? People have tried, but it's a recipe for disaster. In a way, that's what happened to the world machine. The code conflicts thing? Yeah. But, while you can't build a robot to not follow its code, you can establish a special bond with it. If the strength of that bond is strong enough, the robot's mental capacity will start to develop outside of its programming. In a way, it's starting to believe itself as a real, valid individual. It's a complete suspension of disbelief on your end, though. You have to f fully embrace the robot as a genuine, living person, even knowing they are not. You need to spend a lot of time with it. Treat it like a good friend. Devoting your heart to the robot until it is able to return your feelings. <laughs> I make it sound so easy, don't I? But you and Grady know better than anyone that it's not. Right now, the world machine is probably really, really scared. This content update involves some pretty hef deep code work. My creator was able to access some of the source code, you know. He did what he could and established new connections between maps. Those links enabled you to meet the other two. But, as it turned out, the new code confused the world machine to such an extent that it's breaking down altogether. Even though the world machine always had self-destructive tendencies, it usually restrains itself when you are in the world. It doesn't want to take you along with it. All my creator wanted was to write a happy ending. Right now, the only hope of saving you is to take you through that ending. But now the other two are gone. I don't even know how we're going to get you there. We should go. Even this place is no longer safe. <gasps> you guys are... okay! Yep. When the factory started collapsing, I really thought we didn't have a chance. Fortunately, the robot assembly rooms were built pretty tough. And... It actually did not take me long to bring Proto back. All thanks to Father's book. We had we had made my design documents to be compatible with the assembly machines there. All I had to do was scan in the blueprints and reconfigure some machine settings. Father really does think of everything. That he does. I'm just glad everyone is okay. Same. We're ready to go now, Nico. Right. Let's put an end to this. Although, I sense a flag triggering. Oh, this is... No wonder he wanted us all to be here for this. Um, what are these things anyway? Code portals. They... temporarily remove us from the world. What? It's... a bit hard to explain. But, basically, my father has hidden a description key in our code with a .txt file as its shell. Oh. 
but to get to them, we have to be removed from the world and decompiled. When our keys are combined into a central location, it will activate an encrypted part of this world, which will... Yeah. Uh. Rue, maybe it's better if you explain. I'll attempt. Basically, these portal all represent a physical location on Grady's machine. Yep. Ooh. And when we enter these portals, we will be sent to that location. Wherever that is. I'm sure Grady is already pretty familiar with retrieving puzzle pieces from this world on their computer. Yep, you got it. But this time, Grady would need to move around some things as well. Oh. Specifically, by moving the keys from the small portal to the big one. Small to big. Okay. I don't know what happens next, though. I see. Does Grady know where these portals lead, at least? You should probably ask Grady on this. Right. Uh, hold on. The journal's glowing again, Grady. Okay. Let's have a look. Documents, my games, one shot. Okay. Let's have a look. Going in. Wait. Let's see. Documents, my games, one shot. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. So. Okay. This one is red. This one would be meant for me then. This one is green. This one is configured to my code, I think. This one is blue. That's mine then. Alrighty. Let's see. So. Well. Let's see then. So I just took the one he was in and put it in there. So, let's see. Portal 2 has key G. Oh, it represents the colors. That was key blue. This is key green. Cedric. Let's see. So, cut. Big portal. And paste. One more. Paste. There they are. Oh. I hope they're okay. Let's see here. Huh. Well, what are we here? That was quite peculiar, I'll say. Hmm. Hey, this is... The world machine. The room ahead doesn't really lead anywhere, but... Gray should still remember what to do here. Huh. Well... I'm sure those of you who were here before knows what... Yep, yeah, we're back, Nico. This is quite an interesting way to enter the, t the tower. Or is this the tower? 
Huh? Where are we? Look at all that. Huh. Well, should be close to whatever we need to find. This must be it. Ah! Running, 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 running! Gah! Uh oh. Nico. Ah! Relax. I'm just borrowing your reflection to talk to you. It's not like my physical form is good for that. Ah. Uh. Why did you come here? Can't you see? The disruption. The squares. They're closing in. Nico, please, get out of here. Let me meet my end in peace. The squares are blocking my way too, you know. Oh. I... I'm sorry, I... It's alright. No living being should be in this place, Nico. Is this... the tower? Part of it. This is the center of the engine. Inside my head, so to speak. So this is... the center of the world machine? You... know my original name. How? Rue, Cedric, Prototype, they all told me bits and pieces. I'm not even sure if I even understood a lot of the stuff they said, but... I know what you're supposed to be. I know why you had to be built. And... I know why I'm here. They... told you? When? Wait, you don't know about that? But I thought you were... the world. Aren't you supposed to see everything? No. All this was outside of the protocol. This session was never supposed to happen the way it did. The story wasn't written into my protocol at all. Oh, right. Rue told me something about how your creator had to alter the code. I think it was to connect some areas together so that we can meet. My creator. Yes. Grady listened to my creator. They were all working beyond my scope of influence. Back at the mines, I remember... Grady did something to find a hidden map. I did not even recognize it. I couldn't see anything there. I just... knew... what you were feeling. You were really upset. Something happened in there to make you upset. After that, I... I panicked. That was when the cave-in happened. I... I remember the structure collapsing. I thought you got hurt. I... In that moment, I really thought that I was shutting myself down for good. I really am a flood machine, aren't I? 
What kind of machine would go against the wishes of its own creator? What kind of machine would... I'm... The squares. Rue told me it was your own code going bad. But that's not really your fault, is it? Yes, it was! At first, it was intentional. During testing, long before he realized I was self-aware, I would rearrange specific parts of the code, jumbling up bits and pieces of the landscape. Blocking passages, collapsing catwalks. Though they were very localized, it caused my creator a great deal of frustration, forcing him to exit and restart testing again and again. Why would you do that? I got curious. I just thought he would figure it out eventually. But before he knew how to fix it, the world's NPCs, the characters, some of them got too close and... It spiraled out of control after that. I couldn't contain it at all. My panic only made it worse. Eventually, any character who gains the knowledge of who I am, their code, my code, couldn't handle it. Previous iterations of the world had more people, you know. And I almost endangered my creator, too. I... I was... I was so scared, Nico! I know you're upset because you don't want to put living people in danger. Living people like me. In the beginning, I tried to fight it, but my core programming made me summon you here. I tried to send you back home at the tower, but it did not work. Then, I wanted you to break the sun. I thought that would have worked, but... Oh, I had no way to be sure. But Grady brought you back anyway. Nico, all I want is for you to wake up back in your world. But I don't think I can make it happen. But... I know I can't go back home without saving the world for real. Which means, we have to fix the root of the problem. We have to fix you. But that's... I... know the original ending your creator put in was a happy one. Do you... remember what it's supposed to be? It's far too late for that. That part of my code has been long corrupted. That's okay. I would still like to know. All right. You're supposed to place the sun at the summit. And then, credits would scroll. Credits? And then, you would return to the room you woke up in. That's where you would have been able to leave. And why is it that you can't do it now? Nico, the code's gone, remember? Shattering the sun was only supposed to be a workaround. I don't even remember the original code enough to describe it. But at the same time, it... Oh... I don't know. It sounds like you're always fighting yourself. 
You can tell, huh? It's the whole thing about conflicts in your code, isn't it? I am a machine, Nico. Machines are built with a fundamental law, which is never let a living being come to harm. You knew. My very existence conflicts with that law. I thought the life of a living being like you is so unique, so precious. This fake world isn't worth that risk. But the people here, I think they are. They're code too. You know this. Their behavior all derive from a predetermined matrix of actions. <clears throat> all extensions of my own programming. They cannot act outside of it. You, though... You're the only person who's actually real here. That's why... It's pointless to put you in danger to save them. To save me. I don't think that's true about the people I know. You said this session wasn't in your code, right? Yeah. So, if this session wasn't supposed to happen, if even you didn't know what to do, how would the characters, how did the people know how to respond? I... You said it yourself. When you didn't know what was happening, you kind of just stopped working for a while. So how did the people know what to do to help me get here? Even if it meant getting hurt themselves. Even if it meant messing up their own code. You might not think they are real, but there's... There must be something real in them. And if they're all supposed to be extensions of your code, then there must be more to your own programming than you know, too. Can you try to put me through the ending? The one you described? How many times do I have to say this? That code is gone! It's all squares now! I'll just... put you in danger. I... will risk it. I remember... Ruth said the world was never designed to put me in danger. Your creator wouldn't want that. And I trust you, too. Even if your code is broken, you can still go outside that code, right? I can't! I'm not tamed! Yes, you are! You talk just like the tamed robots I know. The robot lady, prototype... Taming is when a person is when a real person cares about you, right? It's when a real person thinks you're real too, right? Well, guess what? I do, and I know Grady does too. Even though you told them they only had one chance, they found a way back, didn't they? Huh. Why? Do you think Grady would keep coming back? I... Why do you think Grady would restart even after the ending? I think Grady wants to save the both of us. So please, give me a chance. I... I don't know. I've never done this before. I... I'm scared. 
You can do it. I know you can. You've helped me come this far. I'll... I'll try. I can't promise anything, but... Here. Take the sun. I'll... Try to remember the lost code. And... Recreate it. But for that to happen... Nico, you need to navigate through this room. You need to get past the square somehow. Oh, I don't like this. What if you get hurt? It's fine. It's fine. I'll... I'll try to be careful, okay? I can do this. <sighs> hey. Grady, did you see that? See what? The square's just... Huh? It just happened again. I... think... Something is making them go away. Come on, let's try the rest. <laughs> Whee! Grady, I think it's working. Nico was right. I... might actually be tamed after all. I... I remembered what the code was supposed to be. Only bits and pieces. But I can remember. And... I'm trying to fill the blanks too. And... I'm restoring the original ending as we speak. Nico will be able to reach the tower summit at the end of the credits. After replacing the sun, Nico will go back to where it all began. And then, Nico will be able to go home from there. But, this is permanent. After Nico wakes up back home, this world would only exist as a memory. For Nico, a dream. Like thousands of other dreams. For you, a story. Like thousands of other stories. But, as long as Nico remembers this place, as long as you remember this place, it'll be alright. I was able to restore some other elements, too. The characters. The people that were lost on Nico's journey. They're all in the next room. I would have put them back where they belong, but... Not yet. I think Nico should see them again first. Please say goodbye to Nico for me. Well, do. You know, you're all right. Messiah? Robot lady! You're okay? I think so. so. The last thing I remember was the squares closing in on me. But then I ended up here unscathed. Is that so? This is such a strange room. We can't be in the tower, can we? I'm actually not sure myself. Where did you come from, anyway? The rumor of the world machine was... Pardon? I think the world machine is trying to remember now. 
the code that went bad. I think it's restoring it all. That must have been why the squares were going away, Grady. And it's why you're here, miss. I think the world machine was able to recover your code, too. World machine, huh? Oh, I'm not sure if I should tell you this, but... What's that in the distance? <gasps> Can you see me? It looks like a few more people are showing up. Oh. Okay. Oh! Are they people you know? It's a bit too far to tell. Come on, Gray. Let's go take a closer look. Heh. <laughs> Hey, robot! How you been, buddy? Hello. Hi. I cannot move. Oh, yeah. I guess there's no water here. It's fine. The hard, the head engineer can help me later. Spirit! Hello, Messiah. Plant lady? But I thought you... I thought you... It wasn't even squares that did it. No. I just... wanted to see you both again. I just wanted to say... Thank you. Hmm. It's a shame I wasn't able to restore her the first time. I actually saw how. But... I'm not gonna worry about it. Hey, Guardian Bot 1? Wait, no. Hey, Guardian Bot Green. Off you go, Messiah. <laughs> Nico! You're okay, too! Did you guys just get here? I think so. The square started multiplying around the island after you guys left. It was so freaky! I fell right into a bunch of them. Calamus tried to save me and then... We both ended up in this room. Biggest scare of my life for sure. Oh. Say, what is this place? Are we in limbo? Alula. We're not dead. Wait. Are we? Good. Good. Question. Hey, Grady, are they going to be okay? They're fine, Nico. Everyone is fine. The world machine will send them home soon. Oh. Well, Gray says you're not dead. Phew. They also said you'll be able to go back to your home very soon. That's even better than Limbo! Hey, Guardian Bot Red. <laughs> see. It's you! Glad to see you in one piece. Glad to see you're okay, too. After the whole elevator thing. That was, uh... uh that was the most awkward elevator ride I've ever been through. And by awkward, I mean terrible, bad, awful, the absolute worst. The squares, like, start leaking into the room, right? And I was trapped like a rat. And they just kept filling in the room faster, right? Am I dead? No, no, you're fine. Everyone in this room is fine. You'll be able to go back home soon. Oh, thank goodness gracious. I can't work when I'm dead. <laughs> ah. I thought we'd see these three. This path leads to the summit of the tower. You already know what to expect, right? Mm-hmm. It's the glass room, right? That's it. You can go through this portal when you're ready. Goodbye, Nico. 
in the end, the world machine was starting to create its own code. Going above and beyond its programming, not as the result of error, but as a conscious choice on the part of the machine. Being able to generate its own path forward. That's what being tamed is all about. I couldn't have said it better myself. Looks like you managed to do it. You managed to tame the world machine, Nico. I feel like the world machine had been has been tamed this whole time. Just by Grady and I being here. We did spend a lot of time here, after all. Both of us never really stopped believing in this world. The world machine just needed to realize that, I guess. That sounds like a possibility. Or not. Well, just throwing that idea up there. Well. This is it. There it is. Mm-hmm. This is where the sun belongs. Here goes nothing, Grady. <laughs> Yay! There it goes. <laughs> and they're back. And Guardbot Green's back. Although, they're going to need a new generator. <laughs> yep. There you are. This is the room I first woke up in. Grady? Are you still here? Grady? Yes? Grady! I... I think... I think it worked! It did. The sun is back! And he actually got to see it this time! We... Actually did it! So... What do we do now? I guess I should figure out how to get home from here. Wait... This... Isn't a door, is it? This looks like one of those portals we saw all the way back in the city. The room behind it, the room behind the big clock. And, and, I see a wheat field on the other side. I see my village. I, I hear my mama. She's looking for me. Uh, Grady, this isn't the first time we've said goodbye, is it? But this will be the last time, won't it? I don't think we'll ever see each other again after this. And what will become of the world after all we've been through? After everything we've done, I still don't know. This place 
these people won't stop existing. They'll be in your memory. And they'll be in my memory, too. I... promise I'll never forget this world. I promise I'll never forget you, Grady. So, take care of yourself, okay? You too. Mm-hmm. Goodbye, Nico. Goodbye, Grady. Whoa! <laughs> he just walked off the screen! He just walked off the screen! Well... I guess that's it. So, one peat, uh, one shot. It. I, if I were to rank it with other games I've played before, I'd rank it slightly above Undertale. Cause. A good story actually makes you think, and this one, it makes you think. So, if someone feels like they don't matter in the world, I would suggest giving them this game and have them play through it. So, if you like what you've watched, be sure to tune in next week, same time. And I'll also be editing, I'll be also be clipping this video and putting it up on YouTube. And be sure to check out my Twitter. I'll be posting updates onto that. So don't think that this is the last stream I'll be doing. I've got other games lined up. And I've already got one ready to go as soon as I'm done with this. So, with that said, this has been the end of a Monday. Have a good night. Let's see here.